This video is designed for hobbyists, recreational pilots that want to fly their drones in a controlled airspace that is not part of LANCE. Now, for those of you that don't know, LANCE is the system that allows you to get authorization to fly in controlled airspace. It is available at uh, 600 airports at the time I'm recording this video. And uh, it's instantaneous. Now, you can go to your favorite LANCE provider. You can go to uh, Kitty Hawk, for example, UA Sidekick. Uh, you can go to Skyward. These are providers that allow to receive these requests and then give you approval within seconds. Now, if you live at one of those airports, one of the other than the 600 airports that are covered in LANCE, and you want to fly there when, when you, you're not covered by LANCE, then, um, then until now, you've, you couldn't do it. So as a hobbyist, you could not fly in controlled airspace outside of LANCE airport. But now, as of yesterday, you can actually do this. So this video, I'm going to show you how to use the FA drone zone to submit a request in order to fly in controlled airspace for non-LANCE airports. There's a little caveat in here. The FAA says that it can take up to 45 days to get this approval. So you have to make sure that you submit this ahead of time. Now, the good news is you can actually submit for a date range and get an approval for an extended period of time. So let's say that you live in an airspace that is not covered by LANCE and you want to fly on a daily basis, then you can go ahead and do this with this uh, drone zone website. So uh, just like for LANCE, for hobbyists, you cannot request to fly above the grid. And when I say the grid, I'm talking about the UAS facility map, which I'm going to show you here on the computer, how to use it and what it looks like. Um, you can also not fly at night. So that's another limitation by the system is you can't fly at night in order to do this. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm, I'm going to show you the UAS facility map. I'm also going to show you how you can plan for your flight and then how you can submit that request through the FA drone zone and then uh, hopefully get approval less than 45 days, but we'll see how long it takes. Uh, this is brand new. This came out yesterday. So I'm recording this at the end of September of 2019. And this uh, this has, um, so I want to show you how you do this. So, so let's go ahead and dive in there. So from the FA standpoint, here's the FA drone zone, FA drone zone.fa.gov. Now you should already have a login if you have registered your drone in the past, and I hope you have, it's required. So you can go in here and log in. So this is what I'm gonna do right now. Just I wanna show you what the interface looks like. So as I log in, I'm going through the different steps in here. And then on the top right, now I'm a Part 107 pilot, so I have a, a Part 107 dashboard, but you can click right here on Recreational Flyer Dashboard. This is where your registration should show, and this is where you'll be able to have airspace authorization. Now, I played with this yesterday, so if I scroll down right here, you can see that uh, I have a draft. So right here, if you click at the bottom, you'll see that it says Create Airspace Authorization. Now, before we click, I wanna show you here uh, there's a step-by-step -step application process guidance. Now, unfortunately, when I click on this, uh, it's going to open a new tab, and uh, this takes you to the Part 107 waiver. Now, th the procedure should be the same, even though this is only tailored to Part 107 pilots. Uh, it says how to apply for a waiver right here. There is some information. I don't want you to get too deep into this and too confused about everything that's in here. But uh, the other downside is if I click, I close this one, it says how to apply for airspace authorization. At the moment, it goes to a page not found. So hopefully by the time this video is released, they have fixed that. And there is some information in here for you to submit air, airspace authorization. I'm gonna give you some tips based on what I've done before for part 107 authorization. But right now this is kind of, uh, this is unfortunate that this information is not in there. Now, create, so we're gonna go create right here. And then here it tells you that you cannot fly above the designated ceiling for the facility map. I'm gonna show you how we find a facility map. And then here, I'm also gonna, uh, and then it says here that you can fly at night, okay? So start the application. Uh, you got to give it a name. I'm going to call it test flight number two right here. And uh, your information should already be in here. Make sure it's correct. And we're going to click next. Now in here, those are the parameters for the operation. Start of the operation, end of the operation. So here we're going to put a start. Now today is the end of September. So I'm going to make this to be November 1st of 2019. Remember it takes 45 days. So you don't want to do this too close because they won't have time to get to it and then it's going to get canceled. So you want to give yourself enough time. November 1st, and I'm actually going to put an end date of November 1st of 2020. I want this to, I want to do this for a year because I live close to this. I don't, but if you live close to that airport, then you want to fly on a regular basis. 
Sunrise to noon, noon to 4, 4 p.m. to sunset or night. Don't click night, it's gonna get canceled. You can click several. Um, I like to fly from sunrise to noon and then usually from noon to 4 p.m. Select the frequency. I'm gonna fly there on a weekly basis. And then what is your time zone? Okay, MST right here. Now it says here, proposed location of operation. Um, in here, you can type the text and you can tell them, I'm going to be located at uh, this uh, intersection of roads, for example, and then I'm going to be flying for a radius of this distance. Now, if you look lower here, it says propose maximum altitude, and then here it says latitude and longitude information, and then the radius. So let's do an example. Let's go to the facility map right here. And what I did is um, I zoomed, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit further out. This is the whole country right here. And you can see the different colors. We have green colors and we have red colors. Green colors are airports that are approved through LENS. You do not need to do this for these green airports. You just need to go and submit a LENS request through a LENS provider, get almost immediate approval and then go fly. For the red airports, now we need to do this. So I'm gonna zoom in to the Phoenix area. So you can see, uh, I, I picked up this airport right here at the bottom, and uh, I'm just gonna keep zooming because I've already selected the area where uh, I wanna fly. I'm gonna pick this area right here, 300 foot ceiling. Now you see it says 300 within this circle. Uh, this means that we can only fly up to 300 feet. You cannot request to fly any higher than that. Now, if we look in here, there's going to be some information, including latitude and longitude in the decimal format. This is not what we want for the application. And then in here it says KIWA, which is Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, which is a fairly big airport. And if you keep scrolling down, it says this is a class D airport, class Delta airport. This information is going to be important for our application. Class D is controlled airspace. We need authorization. There's a grid and it's a red grid. We need to do it through the drone zone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to switch so you can see a satellite view. Uh, it's not in layers. Actually, it's right in here. And we're going to do uh, imagery right here with labels. Now you can see this whole area is kind of an open area. And this is where I want to fly my drone. This is just an example. So what I'm going to do is I can use the measurement tools here to gather the information we need for the drone zone. Let's go back to the drone zone. We need a latitude, longitude for the center of our circle. And then we need a radius right here, uh, the length of the radius in nautical miles. And then here we know the nearest airport and we know the airspace already. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the, the tool right here. And when you click on draw, you can do several things. I'm actually going to just do a line, okay? I'm gonna do a line because I want this to be the radius of my circle. And uh, if you go here, you scroll down, it says show length measurement in uh, nautical miles, nautical miles. And I'm gonna move this window to the side. So here I'm gonna draw a line, it goes from the center, and then I'm gonna go right here. And I don't wanna go all the way to the edge because I wanna keep it a little bit close. Actually, I'm gonna go on this side and go right here. It says 0.4 nautical miles, okay? 0.4 nautical miles from the center. Uh, so I'm actually gonna move this, let's see if I can make a line that's half a nautical mile, and you'll see why in a minute, why half a nautical mile, there it is, okay? And then the center of the that, uh, that line is gonna be right here, we'll keep that in mind in a second. Okay, so half a nautical mile, that's gonna take us to the edge right here, and um, if you look at the bottom down here, there's your coordinates. So you're gonna center it right here. It says 33, 20, 31 north. 33, 20, 31. 33, 20, 31 north. And then the other one was, I'm gonna go back. 111, 34, 24. 111, 34, 24. And this is west. In the US, we're west. Radius, it says half a nautical mile right here, or three quarters or a quarter, so half a nautical mile. And then the nearest airport, again, I'm gonna go back and get that data. If I click anywhere on here in that, in that grid, then it says uh, KIWA, KIWA, and then it says class of airspace, Delta D. Make sense? All right, now, Let's go back to the proposed area of operation. We can say, uh, I am requesting to fly in 
and then you can just keep explaining where you want to fly. I'm requesting to fly uh, below 300 feet. So we're going to put 300 feet right here because that is the maximum allowed on this side. Now our half uh, nautical mile circle is also going to go into this area here of 400. So if we fly 300, we're safe. The lowest number we always want to use. So you can continue to explain where you want to fly based on the intersection of this and this or based on this uh, coordinates that are attached down here. And then here you're going to say how you're going to fly. I'm going to be flying with this drone up to this altitude and uh, I'm going to make sure that I maintain visual line of sight, that I don't go about 300, that I'm going to set that up in my controller so that it restricts me to fly up to 300 feet. You're going to basically tell them uh, how you're going to conduct the flight and so they feel comfortable that you will be safe flying in that airspace. Do not spare details. Now don't write a whole, uh, I mean you've got 15,000, 1500 uh, characters in here, uh, actually 15,000 characters in here. So you've got plenty of room to explain how you're going to fly. Um, this is what the FA is going to look at to make sure that you can actually safely fly in that airspace. And then when you're done, so I'm going to just do, I'm going to type some text. I'm not going to submit this one, but from here, we're going to click next. Here you can actually attach a file if you want. Um, if you have a specific fly plan in mind that you're going to be flying, then you can attach it right here as a KMZ file. The FA can open those and load them up in their system. If you're not familiar with KMZ, don't worry about it. Don't get confused. Uh, just go ahead and review this and then click submit. And then that's it. Your, uh, your application is going to go to the FA. It takes up to 45 days for approval. And then hopefully you get approval for an extended period of time and you can just fly in that airspace. Now, if you have any comments, leave them in there. I'll be happy to, uh, to explain and help you if I missed anything. Um, if you, um, as always, if you like the video, just click like. And if you want to subscribe, uh, you'll get more videos just like these and also the weekly update that I do every Friday. So uh, this is it. I, um, I hope this helps. I, I know some people have been waiting for this. And uh, again, leave your comment if you have questions and then I'll see you guys for the next video.